All right, guys. So now we're going to go over what was no doubt the most challenging and discouraging, technically, shot that we're going to do in the entire course. And that's just because of Roto. Roto is hard. It's technical. And when it doesn't look right, anyone can see it with their plain eyes. So here we see some jittering in the mat. There are some mat lines happening, especially around the hair. But let's focus on what the student did well and on a couple of things that could be done better. And by the way, um, in this shot, notice that the reflections on the train <laughs> look like a mat problem. And I've been in situations where I had to change stuff like that. So one thing I want to call out right away is there's an edit to the sign up here. And that is a patch over the large Chinese character on the exit sign, which was the most prominent thing, perhaps, indicating that this was Shanghai. So the student went for that. And let's talk about the four basic methods employed here, uh, of which the student used actually three. So I'll go into what's called the color correction layer, which is where all the roto lives. And so going bottom to the top, the mat worked out with just a static mask. So that's great. That took care of that. And for the torso, the student made use of the extract effect, which seems to have done a really good job, actually, um, because the sky is so bright. This extract was done on the blue channel, so the student looked at the individual channels and chose the one that was working the best. Overall, where I think this student got into trouble was trying to do too many individual things with just a few blunt instruments. Specifically, what we have here with the Refine Soft Matte tool set to the extract is it's doing double duty. The idea was good to get all the fine detail of the hair with refined soft mat and go ahead and just get the arms and shirt along with that. But the arms and shirt look a little too soft, so refined hard mat would really be the right tool for those. And the hair still has all this white fringing to it where really everything to do with the hair needs to be rotoed out probably with a just a garbage mat and then i would use roto brush to do one pass of just selecting the hair and then a refined edge tool to just get those edges isolated and working and do i know that would work no uh it might be that with the hair Selected alone, you have enough contrast against that white sky that you could take a different approach to that. Because Rotor Brush, honestly, is kind of a pain. And her movement here, if you do the first part of the shot, is complex. What the hair overlaps with changes quite a bit, and there's quite a bit of motion. So you might need multiple Rotor Brush spans. And at the end of the day, it's Rotor Brush. So, Kudos for attempting to do this this way, but at very least, I think one would need refined soft mat just for the hair and hard mat for the hard edges elsewhere. On the legs, there was really no chance of a procedural mat succeeding because although the pants are bright white, the areas where they're in shadow don't stand out enough from the background. So the student used mocha, which is great. And you can see that we have four masks here. One is getting the legs together at the beginning. And then for the rest of the shot, we've got a mask for each leg and one for the foot. And you notice it was flickering. So let's just take a look at what was going on with this mask. So here are those four layers. What I want to point out right away, let me just select one of the legs. So. The mask was made right along the edge with a lot of points. And then look at the number of keyframes that went into getting it done. 
So this is a lot of really painful work with a lot of points and a lot of keyframes. Now that's something you want to avoid. And let me just briefly show you how. So in case this wasn't clear, here's the thing with Mocha. In fact, I'm going to turn all these off. So let's say we're working on that left leg. So I'm going to make my initial mask outside of the leg. I'll follow the contours somewhat, but I'm going to go right outside of it. Now it's a separate question, should I be doing the whole leg as one, or should I even be doing a smaller part of it? But I think for the initial pass, this is okay. I'll close it, and let me track forward on that. And so what this is doing is kind of sketching in for me the rough articulated motion of the whole leg. And you can see that it's following along pretty well. Now the problem with trying to also nail down the edge here is that's not really the goal at this point. What we really want to do is just get all of the basic motion, um, the way her body is moving overall, into this track. And then we're going to let that track be the master of sub masks and animate those. And uh, if that sounds confusing, hold on. So uh, I'll just run this to the end, even though we're basically there. And let's just see if I play backwards. So that's tracking that pretty nicely. I mean, visually, you can see that it's right there with the leg. I'll go back to that keyframe and let's track backwards as well, just to see what happens with that. This is a trickier motion. And once it gets back here, we've now got that problem that this student was solving by doing a separate track just for her two legs standing together because it can no longer discern the outline of that leg hidden behind the other leg. So that's understandable. Now what I would do, and I'm just going to do it for one section, but I would consider the leg to be three different sections. The lower leg or calf, the upper leg or thigh, and then her buttock. Even though, probably just consider it like the left flank here. So let's just work on the thigh, just to pick one. And what I'm going to do, I'll go in here, and I want to create just enough points that anticipate what I'm going to need. So I'll start up here. And looks like I better make a point there, one there. I could allow for a wrinkle like that. I want to do it that way. And then I'll come down here, go along there, and out. Now that's probably more points than we really want to use, but this wrinkle may come and go. On the other hand, it's hard to add points later if you don't have the, enough. So let's just say that will do as a starting point. And there's some smaller detail here. You have to make decisions about things like that. Do you need all that? Can you smooth it out a little bit? The important thing is what I'm now going to do is go into Layer Properties, and I'm going to link it to the other layer. And I should have labeled these and given them color. So let's call this left leg. And then I am going to go here and give this one a color as well. OK. So now, with it linked, I'll just scrub through here. And what it's doing, it hasn't solved it. This isn't nailed. But now I can strategically go to the frame where it's furthest away and work on this frame. So like initially, let's say that frame is pretty close. So I'll add a keyframe there. And then in between the two of them, I'll go here. Let's say this one is furthest, so I just move these points in line with the pant leg, and I'm going to do this really sloppily because this is just giving you the gist. Okay, see now there's there's a situation where I actually need these points for a different purpose, so I'm just going to lose the wrinkle a little bit. And let's see what we've got. Okay, going to need more refinement, but it's closer. So now I go to the furthest frame here, which might be that one. 
and I move these into place. Now this is where she is moving the most. And so what I've done overall is just given myself the advantage of blocking in the motion on one pass and then I'm refining it on another. And the idea is not to have so many points and so many keyframes that the whole thing gets out of control. So once she settles in a bit more, you can see that it's not going to take as many keyframes to nail this down. And then I'm going to do the same for the upper and lower parts of that leg. And then I move on to the other leg. One final thing to talk about on this particular example is the color correction. So I'll toggle it on and off. And you can see that the correction is good. It's just, I think, a bit too mild. I'm going to turn this, uh, well, let's leave it on for a second. And let's just go channel by channel as we do. So the green channel, those white pants look so bright. They look really as bright as the illuminated parts of the scene. And on the red channel, she overall is just, wow, really popping, right? Now, of course, she's wearing a red shirt, so that's no huge surprise. But those pants, my god. OK, so I'm going to turn this one off and just add my own curves effect to this to start. So let's just say that we want to come down here. We also want the blacks to be a bit deeper. And I've told you in the past to start with the green channel. And so I'm breaking that rule a little bit here because red in this case had the biggest disparity. So let's just see if I do red first, what happens to the channels. All right, it's interesting. Uh, there's still, let's just see if I pull this down. So I can work on the individual contrast a little bit more by introducing one more point. Bring that up there. And I'm sort of doing this by feel. So that upper white is too hot. And then I want more lower tones in those pants. And I just feel like something like that. Her skin tones match his a little bit more. As a quick pass, I would go with that. And, you know, there's nothing else in the scene that is red, like her top. So for now, I'm kind of ignoring that. There's this orange one over here, which is also pretty, pretty saturated. And overall, you'd want this to have a separate color correction to just give it whatever actual look, look you wanted. Here, all we're trying to do is match everything up. And one last thing, I would like to see a little bit of a shadow on the lower side. I'm just not quite buying that this mat is really on that floor, even though the mask is fine. This student did a thorough and beautiful job with the mat. And we all know situations in life where a beautiful job can be spoiled by one wrong detail. So the first thing you notice when you look at this frame is the discoloration of the foreground character and how blue she is. And we already saw how easy it is to get in trouble with that with these color adjustments. So I'm not going to go as deep into this project in terms of actually fixing it. We already looked at that. But I will say that working with curves like this and Throwing in gamma curves can really make things complicated. And this was the culprit. I mean, without it, this isn't perfect, but uh, it's not blue. And so if you're just starting out, I'm a big fan of starting with levels and not adjusting the, the gamma, just actually channel by channel, at least, only adjusting input and output black and white. Don't do red, green, and blue gammas against each other at first because it's it's a subtle and tricky game. And with curves, it's a lot harder to avoid affecting the gamma. So you know, levels, it's pinned right there between the two. A couple other things to say about this one. So this pre-comp has most of the roto in it. And uh, this student did really break things down. So if I go down 
through this. Uh, I think I have masks enabled. Yeah, so you can see different masks that were applied to different areas. Yes, there was a hair mat there. We'll go back to that. There are some masks that are clearly the result of mocha, but there's no mocha effect. You can delete mocha after you make use of it. Um, I don't know why it might have been a mistake. Uh, but there were a lot of different tricks used in here. So these layers that have effects on them, some of them are using roto brush. Some of them are using linear color key. I wouldn't recommend that. Uh, extract is on this one, which I would recommend over linear color key. You know, there's my opinion, and then there's just what works. Overall, what we have here are 15 individual layers, most of which are using some form of linear key or extractor plus some form of refined matte tool. So they're using luminance. And then there are a few where uh, it seems that Rotobrush must have been doing the job better. And that is in there. But it's in there sometimes combined with masks. This one has no effects on it because the masks are really tight. The main flaw I saw here, and remember when you're looking at masks, you really need to be at full res and re-previewing this was just going to take too long. So I'm looking at every 10th frame. Shift page down. Let me just zoom in. So there are bits of white showing up in the hair and the hair in general is without a lot of its detail. So excellent job again with hair to make this nice articulated mat. It looks like that is from Mocha. It's a mask, not a mat. Mats are the ones you apply with a separate layer technically, but we could call it a mat. So this bit of white here, right, is the result of Refined Soft Matte. So Refined Soft Matte is doing us some favors, but it's kind of taking away as much as it's giving. Now, here you can get a little bit creative. So one thing I tried is just going into Layer View, and even though there's been no roto brush on this going with refine edge tool just going straight to that one just going over the hair with it all right well that gives you an idea so some of the detail is back with some adjustment of levels that could be good it is at least getting rid of those white flecks and bringing back some more of the wispies and where it's not, notice that the mask is a bit tight. So it's not going to bring back anything that's outside the selection area. But those pops of white were uh, the unfortunate thing that made this one part of this 15 layer mask really not work. You know, so that's the game. Focus on whatever is annoying you the most and fix it, just like design. <laughs>